AMD have revealed its vision of the future, and boy oh boy, what a vision it is shaping up to be. Zen 6, Zen 7, RDNA 5, or whatever it ends up being called, are all discussed here, along with some very interesting discussions about their future APUs and AI accelerators. All of this took place at the company's, well, financial analyst day. I know, I know, it does sound a little bit boring, but... For many in the know, they've been really looking forward to this event because AMD, yes, they're going to, of course, announce some very impressive financial data, but these events historically have given us new roadmaps, and that's exactly what's happened here. I'm going to start things out with the CPU side of things because, quite honestly, there's more information about them. Um, so I'm going to put my glasses on so I can actually see worth a damn. And let's take a look at this. So Leadership CPU Core Roadmap. Obviously, this is where we're at right now, Zen 5 and Zen 5C. And they, of course, just mention a few of the important things like re-optimized cache hierarchy. By the way, this is from WCCF Tech. So, of course, if you're interested in following the full article, you know where to look. Um, I'll leave links, of course, in the video description. Wider and deeper. <laughs> no comment. Full 512-bit AI vectors and re-optimized cache hierarchy. And obviously, they shifted from 4 to 3NN. Then Zen 6 and Zen 6C. New AI data type support and more AI pipelines. I'm going to just nudge ya. Um, where are we? There we go to Instalact x86, and we can see some very interesting stuff here on Sourceware. I won't read out all of this patch stuff um, from uh, the various folks over at AMD which are submitting to Linux kernels, but long story short, these are some, probably, of the instructions that are being lovingly added into Zen 6. Zen 6 ZN for ISA, so the ISA now supports AVX 512 BMM, FP16, AVX IFMA and VNNI int uh, 8. Again, obviously, some of the stuff is, well, a lot of the stuff is going to be really aimed more towards the data center. It should have some uses in client, but again, it's mostly primarily. Uh, I suppose there could be some benefits on like laptops and other bits and pieces, but a lot of the stuff obviously is going to be for the data center. Um, I'm pretty sure, actually, I don't remember when. It was quite some time ago I did leak this. I can't honestly remember the video uh, name, but I'm pretty sure I did leak the fact that there was going to be VNNI int 8 on Zen 6, and I think also this one. I definitely didn't leak those, though. Um, either way, this is pretty cool. It's probably not going to benefit the average person that huge amount, but it's still quite interesting. Now, as for the future node, Zen 7 new matrix engine ai data format i do think it's quite interesting um you'll, we'll look at the graphics side of things in a moment but they're actually specifically referencing zen 7 but with the future graphics they don't even give the name at this point but we'll get into that in a moment new matrix engine ai data format expansion uh, where are you? There we go. Hassan. <laughs> I think this is quite interesting little mock-up here. X86, safety, blah, 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 GPU, IO, accelerators, blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, that's exactly how they give the technical presentation at AMD as well. They just say blah, 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 blah. That's exactly how they do it. Anyway, the point is that AMD, obviously, in this specific APU or SOC, or whatever you want to call it, they are pushing more towards accelerators, and this is going to be part of the desktop. If you recall a lot of the leaks we've had regarding uh, Medusa, roughly, basically speaking, Medusa is going to be essentially the same SOC for the desktop and also for laptops. Um, obviously, there will be some differences in terms of, you know, how it's physically plugged into the board. But, um, you know, they're, essentially speaking, they're going a lot more Intel-like in terms of their root, you know, of design. Um, and I have also discussed, of course, Medusa's specifications. It looks like we're going, um, and that's for this one, of course, we're going up to like 24 cores for the desktop, which is going to be absolutely bonkers. There are some um, pieces of uh, information already floating around for Zen 7. I'm actually speaking to a couple of sources at the moment, so I'm waiting to hear back. And also, I don't want to fill this video up with tons of leaks as well. I want to keep this as official as possible. I will, of course, reference the odd leak here or there just because it makes some sense. Uh, especially if it's confirming things, but long story short, AI, AI, AI excuse me, God, I can't speak, uh, is going to be absolutely being doubled down, tripled down, quadrupled down. At this point, there's so many downs, I don't even know. It's kind of ridiculous. 
Um, I'm going to leave this here for the, all of you data center heads. Um, I'm not like super into data center or HPC, but I think it would at least be prudent of me to show you there are some absolutely crazy things with fifth generation Infinity Fabric, 2.5D packaging, Zen 6. <laughs> just the bandwidth figures are just... And they tickle me in places that I don't, I haven't been tickled in a while. It's just absolutely crazy. Um, and there, if we look at the Infinity Fabric roadmap, the uh, the high speed thirties interconnect is absolutely insanity. I mean, it's just really, it's just really crazy. Um, now, where are we? There we go. Um, so we've got to scroll up just for a second, and we'll kind of like work our way down. Now, client revenue share is uh, basically gone up two x. So from 15% up to 28%, which I think is absolutely crazy. Uh, Medusa, obviously, you know, we kind of talked about that. Um, but here's where things get really crazy. So the gaming GPU architecture. So, so far we are here, of course, on the RX 9000 series, second generation AI, dedicated AI, you know, optimized pipelines, blah, 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 advanced ray tracing, and then next gen. Now, interesting thing, notice they are not referencing the name. If we scroll back up here to Zen 7, it specifically says Zen 7. Uh, they don't even say what node it's going to be on. I mean, to be fair, they don't mention the node here either. They don't even say anything about the node. Just it's, well, I guess they don't actually for these either, interestingly. Um, but either way, yeah, that is interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's no reference of the, of the name at all. So is it going to be CDNA? Is it going to be RDNA? Is it going to be called Bob's Burgers? I honestly don't know. I don't think anyone actually really knows at this point. I personally am just going to continue to call it RDNA 5 or UDNA interchangeably because, again, there is no official name. Uh, it's interesting because I don't I don't remember the interview. It wasn't the one with Project Amethyst, to the recent one with the collaboration uh, with AMD and Cerny. There was another interview i can't remember the out there i'm really sorry but there's a, there's an interview with cerny and he's talking a little bit about like what's happening in the industry and you know their partnership with sony and he he basically says i mean not in so many words but i don't know what they're going to call it they don't seem to know what they're going to call it uh, he doesn't say that exactly but in so many words anyway next generation ai and ray tracing and I'm just going to remind you, they have actually, of course, discussed some of this stuff. Neural arrays, radiance cores, and universal compression. This one is going to be a really big thing, I think. The universal compression is going to drastically reduce the amount of bandwidth a GPU requires, because basically, if you can compress the data down, it can just move around the GPU a lot faster. And it's not just about, brr, GPU, you know, memory is good. Um, so, for example, uh, I'm going to give a really dumb example. But let's just hypothetically say you have a GPU that's like um, a 500. Let's just let's just ignore the buses and memory speeds. Let's just say on top on the main VRAM it's like I don't know 500 gigabytes a second. Make it really easy, but you can compress the data by 50 percent. You only need like 250 gigabytes per second. Obviously, I'm you know really making things simple for this, but also it has really big ramifications on the cache. It's on the GPU itself, because when you can squeeze things down, not only do the caches have extra bandwidth, you know, at least, you know what I mean, in terms of, you know, theoretically they do, because if you're pushing less data, the caches are essentially, you know, they're moving that data around faster because it's just smaller, but also the caches can hold more as well. So if you have a cache that's, let's say, 32 kilobytes on like L1, L0, L1, or 64, or 128, or whatever, if the data is smaller, it can just hold a lot more data because obviously it can, you know, the data itself, you know, can kind of fit in. It can squeeze in better. Anyway, Radiance course, it's going to be very interesting to see how they compare against RTX 60 in terms of ray tracing and, of course, neural arrays. So ultimately speaking, I think AMD's going to be in for a really, really good time over the next few years. And they, of course, uh, are also really pushing the um, semi-custom side of things. Obviously, they have the wins with Sony, um, with the PlayStation 6, and also Microsoft. And the PS6, I think, now has sold, what, 85? Is it 85 point something million units? Someone correct me in the comments down below. And ultimately, they, AMD, are getting money for each and every one of those consoles sold. Yeah, it's not 
massive amount but it's you know it's raking them in money if memory serves in the financial analyst day i think it was like microsoft and sony i think it's over the years i think it's raked amd in something like uh, i think it's like 20 billion if someone has the quote from lisa you can uh, plonk it in the comments below but i think it was like 20 billion which is crazy i mean when amd were in a lot of financial trouble back in uh well i guess it was like you know when the ps4 and xbox one were in development and they you know managed to secure design wins from the two vendors like that that semi-custom win really helped to keep the company alive and obviously since then architectures like zen have just been absolutely stellar i i think honestly amd <laughs> it is it is a comeback story it is absolutely crazy to me how amd have just over the last several years just gone absolutely nuts like yeah i think most people expected zen one um you know the original ryzen processors to for example to be decent like everyone knew they were going to be impressive uh the original ipc figures i think were 40 percent and then obviously they ended up being 52 percent over the previous architecture and then obviously it just it was like a train so i think amd have been the, the comeback story of like i don't know a lifetime it is crazy anyway guys i think that's just about it for this particular video as a side note I've also started a second channel, Resampled Pixels. Now, I haven't mentioned the second channel on this on this channel for uh, a couple of weeks because I wanted to build up a little bit of a catalog of content for you guys. Um, and that channel is gonna be a lot more review focused, fun projects and just kind of silliness. And in fact, I recently did a video, I think it was yesterday I uploaded it, and uh, basically it went over some really cool stuff you can do if you have a Ryzen processor, especially one of the dual CCD versions, you get a lot more performance out of it for games. I literally, by the way, got, I think it was like 150 or so additional FPS in Counter-Strike 2 using this thing. Uh, certain games like Resident Evil 4, uh, Remake also got big performance improvements, Spider-Man 2, Cyberpunk, you can check out the video, and there's a bunch of other stuff on the channel as well, I will be regularly uploading it and doing game testing, and there's going to be some really fun content that is not serious, but some just absolutely stupid experiments, I won't reveal what they are at the moment, because I'm still just fine-tuning exactly how it's going to work, but it's, <laughs> let's just say, I wouldn't advise you do it. Anyway, with that said, take care of yourselves, bye for now.